Today MACVSOG is well known as the military unit, that sent Army Special Forces volunteers, to fight the secret war in Laos. Tales of their heroism and sacrifice, engaging vastly superior enemy forces, has become the stuff of legend. Seldom remembered, is the fact that the men of SOG faithfully waited decades, to recount their wartime experience. What secret did SOG hold, that six consecutive presidents, agreed that their actions could never be revealed? In December 1958, the North Vietnamese captured the strategic Laotian town of Chapone. It was to become the headquarters for what the Americans would call the Ho Chi Minh Trail. By 1965, the North Vietnamese controlled the entire panhandle of Laos, from the Magia Pass to just north of Saravan. The construction of a logistics system to move men, arms and equipment into South Vietnam, was the responsibility of the North Vietnamese Army's 559th Transportation Group. By April 1965, it consisted of 24,000 military personnel, supported by more than 20,000 laborers. In the north of Laos, at Long Tiang, the Central Intelligence Agency constructed a secret airbase, to support the military operations, of an army of Hmong tribesmen more than 20,000 strong. The agency financed an airline, called Air America, that transported personnel and equipment, throughout northeast Laos. U.S. Air Force pilots, posing as civilians, and code-named the Ravens, acted as forward air controllers for Hmong and Thai pilots, who flew T-28 ground attack fighters. For 12 years, they would tie up two North Vietnamese divisions, in fighting from the Plain of Jars to the Laos-Vietnam border. Remarkably, by 1969, Long Tiang, a place that did not appear on any map, was one of the busiest airports in the world. It was into this war zone, posing as a neutral country, that on October 18, 1965, MACVSOG deployed their first recon team, of two United States Special Forces soldiers and four South Vietnamese. The Special Forces wore no dog tags or uniform insignia, nothing to identify them as Americans. Over the next six years SOG would send hundreds of units across the fence as they called it. Their objectives varied from reconnaissance, to prisoner snatches and wire taps and also direct interdiction. As the war went on, the mission spread into Cambodia. The United States government continued the facade that there were no U.S. fighting forces in Laos. For their part, the North Vietnamese built up security along their logistics routes, bringing in tens of thousands of soldiers and anti-aircraft guns to counter the SOG forces. The missions were dangerous. SOG cross-border operators suffered one of the highest casualty rates in U.S. military history. By the time SOG's U.S. personnel were forbidden to conduct cross-border operations, in early 1972, North Vietnam had well over 100,000 troops in Laos and Cambodia. Their trucks, supported by a gasoline pipeline, were running on gravel roads, delivering 500 tons of supplies to their allies in South Vietnam daily. The United States Air Force and Navy had dropped 260 million bombs on Laos, making it the most heavily bombed nation in world history. By contrast, although they inflicted losses all out of proportion to their numbers, MACVSOG, seldom had more than 30 Americans at any given time on the ground in Laos, during their entire six and a half years of operations. This is BK Marshall. It's been a long time since I crossed the fence as a member of MACV SOG. Now I could use your help. I do the research and make all these videos by myself. Please like and subscribe to my channel. Feel free to leave a comment or question. I answer most of them. Thanks. I appreciate it. In late 1971, the secret war in Laos, came to light, during a congressional hearing, and subsequent media reports, although its sheer scale and devastation remained invisible to much of the American public. On January 27, 1973, the Paris Peace Accords were signed. U.S. troops were to be withdrawn within 60 days and the 17th parallel would remain the dividing line until the country could be reunited by peaceful means. Two weeks later, the first of 591 U.S. prisoners began to be repatriated, and return flights continued until late March. On March 29, 1973, the last U.S. military unit left Vietnam. In 1975, 3,000 Hmong refugees arrived in Minnesota, bringing with them tales of the heroic war they fought in northern Laos. They were the first of tens of thousands that would follow. 
the magnitude of the CIA and the Air Force involvement was exposed. In 1976, a non-governmental organization ran the first survey of unexploded ordnance in Laos, beginning a tragic cleanup effort that goes on to this day. By the late 1970s, most of the details of the secret war in Laos were public. The one exception was Mac V. Sog's operations. There were some leaks. The Pentagon Papers made reference to the cross-border operations. In 1972, Jim Milkstone of the St. Louis Post-Dispatch, published a largely ignored article titled, Berets Reported Fighting Even Now in North Vietnam, Laos, and Cambodia. Throughout all the disclosures, the Green Berets of Mac V. Sog kept their oath of silence, as they watched their children grow up, and their parents pass away. Tragically, those related to Sog's killed, and missing in action, would not learn the truth for decades. Why didn't the Department of Defense declassify SOG's operations, in the late 1970s? From the beginning, everything SOG did was stamped top secret. Ostensibly to keep information from the enemy. However, every special forces soldier, who crossed the border, assumed his mission had been compromised. Even with a full-blown war raging in Laos, both the North Vietnamese and the Americans denied they were violating the neutrality of Laos. By 1968, the main reason the operations were kept secret, seemed to be to avoid criticism from a hostile anti-war public, press and Congress. Obviously, that reason ended with the war. It was speculated that SOG's activities weren't being declassified, because the army held a grudge against the Green Berets. And that was certainly true. Many saw the special forces as an overhyped band of freewheeling misfits, who were more loyal to their Montagnard allies than the regular army command. In 1969, a special forces unit got caught up in a dispute between the State Department and the Central Intelligence Agency, when they terminated a Vietnamese double agent with extreme prejudice. The Army's Criminal Investigation Division was quick to throw Colonel Robert Rowe, the commander of the 5th Special Forces Group in jail, in a case that came to nothing. General Creighton Abrams tried to replace Rowe with Colonel Alexander Lambers, a non-Special Forces officer, to straighten the group out. Fortunately, he broke his ankle during airborne training. But in the end, it was not the army that kept SOG's actions classified for so many years. Mac V. SOG had a far bigger reason for secrecy than the Americans they put in Laos. A reason the Special Forces soldiers knew nothing about. On January 24, 1964, the Central Intelligence Agency turned its largely unsuccessful, covert operations in Vietnam, over to the military's special assistant for counterinsurgency and special activities. Mac V. SOG was born. SOG's first commander, Colonel Clyde Russell, continued the CIA's agent infiltration program. Teams of South Vietnamese volunteers were parachuted, or dropped by boat on the North Vietnam coast. These operations were no more successful than they had been for the CIA, as most of the agents were quickly captured. That spring, SOG began to employ a number of Norwegian nasty-class fast attack boats. Considered state-of-the-art, they were hardly the stuff of covert warfare. At 80 feet long, powered by twin diesel engines, they were capable of speeds of over 40 miles per hour, and a range of a thousand miles. Armament included two 20mm and one 40mm gun. An 81mm mortar with a 50 caliber machine gun, mounted piggyback was placed forward of the bridge. In Da Nang, Navy SEALs went to work training Vietnamese crews to operate the boats and weapons. SOG's 900-word presidential unit citation speaks primarily to the cross-border operations run by the Army's Special Forces, and the aviation units that supported them. These operations should have been declassified soon after the war ended. In the next-to-last paragraph there is one 26-word sentence. It reads, SOG's Vietnamese Naval Surface Forces. Instructed and advised by U.S. Navy SEALs. Boldly raided North Vietnam's coast, and won surface victories against the North Vietnamese Navy. This was the secret that kept Mac V. Sog's activities classified for decades. Fifteen months before the first Green Berets entered Laos, those naval forces precipitated the event, that sent 2.7 million Americans to war in Vietnam. On the night of 30 July 1964, four of Sog's nasty boats headed north along the North Vietnamese coast. The USS Maddox, a naval destroyer rigged for eavesdropping, was in the Gulf of Tonkin, intercepting North Vietnamese radio transmissions. It was tasked to monitor the SOG operations, in case they were needed for support. At midnight, the nasty boat split up. Two boats attacked Hanmi Island. They carried a Vietnamese SEAL sabotage team that they had planned to put ashore. 
However, they met stiff resistance and raked the island facilities with 20 and 40 mm cannons before fleeing to the south. The other two boats fared better. They approached Han New Island unobserved, and spent 40 minutes hammering a communications tower, and surrounding facilities, before racing back to Da Nang. Two days later, on August 2, the Maddox moved to the location of the SOG raid, adjacent to Han Mi Island. Expecting another attack the North Vietnamese launched three torpedo boats. The Maddox headed for open water, pursued by the torpedo boats. By the time the Maddox was 20 miles offshore, the boats had drawn within a thousand yards. The Maddox opened fire. The boats launched two torpedoes which missed, and turned to run for shore. Supported by aircraft from the carrier USS Ticonderoga, the torpedo boats were shot up, leaving one in flames, dead in the water, and the others damaged. The next night, SOG's nasty boats, attacked again. For the first time, they attacked targets on the mainland. Bombarding a radar station at Vin Sun, and a security post on the banks of the Ron River. The following night, the 4th of August 1964, the Maddox, now joined by the USS Turner Joy, reported that they were under attack. Unable to locate any targets, they fired hundreds of rounds and dropped depth charges. A single F-18 Crusader, from the USS Ticonderoga, flew over the area, assessing that no enemy were present. The ships withdrew their report, citing bad weather, and a radar malfunction. With a 12-hour time difference, President Johnson went on national TV that night. He stated, this is the quote. The initial attack on the destroyer Maddox, on August 2nd, was repeated today by a number of hostile vessels, attacking two U.S. destroyers with torpedoes. It was a lie of breathtaking proportions, that would ultimately affect the lives of millions of people. He announced he would ask Congress to increase his military authority, citing the unprovoked North Vietnamese attacks, on U.S. naval vessels in international waters. Johnson ordered Mac V. Sog's naval operations to stand down, until after his request was approved by Congress. With the escalation, the International Control Commission, immediately sent a delegation to Da Nang, to verify reports of naval attacks on the north. SOG moved the nasty boats and their crews to Cameron Bay, where they lay low, until the inspection was over. President Johnson and Congress acted swiftly. On August 7, 1964, they passed the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution, granting the president unprecedented military powers. President Johnson now had the authority that would send millions of Americans to war in Vietnam over the coming years. MacVisog held the secret that would certainly topple the Johnson administration. After the war, successive presidents acquiesced to the Defense Department's demand that all of SOG's activities be kept from the public on the basis that their release would cause great harm to the nation. From what we know today, the secret of MACVSOG, is the longest held secret in American military history. Days after the passage of the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution, the nasty boat operations resumed. 